As the hours dwindle, we finally leave the assembly rooms to head home. We decide to pass through the park, enjoying the lingering heat of the sun before evening settles. Arabella and the Colonel walk on ahead, as is becoming their custom whilst Amsbury, Montfort, and I linger behind. Mr. Amsbury happily recounts tales of his childhood spent with Mr. Montfort, whilst Mr. Montfort assures me that he is nothing like he was as a boisterous youth. Are they wearing matching hats? I'm not sure. No, 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 they've got different hats. Mr. Amsbury's hat is slightly taller. Oh, come now, Pierce, there must be a little bit of rascality left in you. I fear my mother would go to hysterics should she ever think as much. Agreed. Do you have a house in town, Mr. Montfort? My family does. Oh, nonsense, man. That manor is far too large for you to rattle about it alone. You should stay with me. Mr. Montfort gives a resigned sigh at his friend's suggestion, though it seems only so he can attempt to hide a smile. You would unlikely let me hear the end of it if I do not, so yes, I shall move my belongings over. It will be just like when we attended college. Oh, I do hope not. I cannot stifle my laugh as I watch the two interact with such ease. It reminds me so much of my own close relationship with Arabella. And where are your lodgings, Mr. Amsbury? My family owns one of the townhouses on the Crescent. The Royal Crescent? Arabella's sudden halt and question makes us all flinch. Were you, were you listening to our conversation just now, Arabella? Really? Amsbury recovers from his surprise, uh, smiling broadly at her. Yes, we've had it for a few years. I've always longed to attend one of the gatherings in a house on the Crescent. I hear they're most splendid. Then I cannot disappoint. I shall hold a select gathering in the middle of the season at my house. One that shall congratulate all who have made it so far without being overcome by the tedium of society. You should not joke about such things, Lawrence. The gathering or the boredom? Neither, if you wish to uphold your family's good reputation. Arabella claps her hands together in excitement, ignoring the men's continual banter. And I shall hold you to your word, Mr. Amsbury. Why do we not dis let's just dis let's just discuss details now. Arabella gives an eager nod and moves back to the colonel, ready to talk further on the matter. Before he moves away, I clasp his arm so he glances back at me. I'm looking forward to it. Ah, uh, uh, you shouldn't do it just for her benefit. Do it for mine, too. Oh, you shouldn't just do it just for her. Trust me, Miss Bennett, this is barely for her benefit at all. His half-lidded gaze holds mine for a long moment, and I almost falter beneath the close attention. Oh, swoon! I'm swooning. I shall leave you in Pierce's amiable company whilst I speak with your friend. He gives a final nod of his head before speeding his steps to catch up with Arabella and the Colonel ahead. He's changed little. Mr. Montfort gives a light laugh before turning to face me. I hope my conversation shall suffice in the meantime, Miss Bennett. He offers his arm towards me and I take it with a grateful smile. It feels odd to place my fingers gently against his arm and I, I almost blush to realize how accustomed to Mr. Amsbury's touch I have become. We walk on a few paces behind the others, watching as Arabella and Amsbury talk in an animated fashion. Do you come to town every year, Mr. Montfort? Not every year, unfortunately, but I attend when I'm able. Do you come by choice or by duty, as Mr. Amsbury does? Unlike my friend, I most enjoy the company of society and its people. My brows curve at his reply. That surprises you. Indeed it does. I half expected you to hold the same views as Mr. Amsbury, seeing as you two are such keen friends. We do make strange companions, but I, fe but I find that's what keeps the friendship fresh. Such different views can keep us awake at all hours as we try to convince the other of the merits of one thing or another. We are nearly always at opposition on those topics. And what have you, Miss Bennett? Word around town is that you are doing your best to make your way through society. Lawrence does admire those who make an effort in anything, so I suppose it's no surprise he's formed an apparent attachment to you. Yes. I only hear a few words of his statement. You believe he's formed an attachment to me? 
Well, isn't that obvious with that romantic scene earlier? Miss Bennett, did you not catch on to the fact that he likes you? Do you not think so? I did not realize it was supposed to be secret. He's certainly not one for keeping things quiet, if that's what you had preferred. Uh, maybe it is that your intentions are not the same as his. Oh, oh no, trust me, buddy. I believe they are much the same as his. I, I, you know what? I, I don't want to give his best friend the wrong impression. I want his best friend to say, Hey, buddy, she loves you just as much as you love her. Propose already. So yes, I believe my intentions are much the same as his. I'm pleased to hear it for Lawrence's sake. He gives a small smile before speeding our steps. Let us reach the others and join in with whatever eccentric plans they are certain to have concocted. With a small laugh, I agree, and we hurry our steps to catch the others. As we reach the edge of the park, Mr. Montford excuses himself in order to arrange for his belongings to be moved to Amsbury's house. If only the four of us, I am more than a little thrilled to find us pairing off. Amsbury and I speak on topics I'd never discuss with anyone save Arabella, like current literature, theology, even politics. He listens intently to each of my views before giving his own, and not once does he dismiss anything I have to say. The discussions keep me so engaged I barely even realize we've arrived at home. Well, your interests must have led you to have heard of a new trend of novels. Quite scandalous, some of them. Tales of eerie castles, ghosts in chains, dark secrets. Even romantic highwaymen. My father has forbade any books of that nature from the house, though my sister and I have managed to sneak a few in. <laughs> you cannot believe this kind of literature really rots the mind, as others believe it does. Ah, uh, I would say that anything that spurs the imagination is a valuable co uh, uh, commodity. I can't believe anything that spurs the imagination is a valuable commodity. Oh, on this you agree, but my idea that horse-drawn carriages are a nuisance is too far-fetched? I can hear the teasing in his words and cannot help but smile at it. Mr. Amsbury, carriages may be a danger in some areas, but how else will people travel? I could not travel to town on foot, could I? Ah, uh, that's true. He steps closer, closing the small gap that had been between us. And I would never wish anything that would have kept me from meeting you. Oh, oh, oh my. I stuttered to reply, only able to feel the heat of his body as he is so close. Because my absence w would have allowed you to think you are right on all things? Because you engage me in all ways, Miss Bennet. Oh my! I feel a rush of heat flood my cheeks, and I have to glance away for fear of being hypnotized by him, by his beauty, by his wonderfulness. His focus remains trained on me, even as even the chill breeze is not enough to stifle the heated air that clings about us. I let out a small breath through parted lips, then watch as his gaze drops to them. Drops to my lips. Would you allow... Catherine, we really should let the gentleman be... Oh, come on, Arabella, come on! You can't interrupt! He was about to ask permission to kiss me goodbye. And, and then you had to ruin it, Arabella. Oh, no, no. At the sudden call from Arabella, I take a stumbling step back from Mr. Amsbury, hoping to find my wits again. Oh, of, uh, of course, uh... And he's not very happy anymore. I smile at Mr. Amsbury, struggling to keep the moment from before, uh, from my thoughts. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Miss Bennet. I truly hope to see you soon. He tips the hat, staring at me for a moment longer, before turning away to walk off with Colonel Foxley down the shadowed street. I watch him go before noticing Arabella step up beside me. Quite the progressive thinker, is he not, you, Mr. Amsbury? You should not say he's mine, Arabella. People will think you're serious. I believe his intentions towards you, his attentions towards you, are a much bolder declaration than my statement. She smiles at me, though I can see a serious concern in her eyes. He's a wonderful man and comes from a good family and reputation. Just be careful not to be swept up in his way of thinking yourself. Society isn't quite ready for people of his mindset, and I would hate for you to think... I would hate to think of you gaining the annoyance of society for his sake. You worry too much for me, Arabella. I've known him for so short a time, nothing serious has yet come of it. And uh, something serious would have happened if you hadn't interrupted. It only takes a moment if it's true, Catherine. 
She takes my hand gently and smiles. Let's get inside. I'm quite chilled without the presence of Colonel Foxley to keep me warm. And you worry about my reputation. <laughs> Our laughter echoes down the empty street before we turn to head inside.